This episode of Mighty Car Mods is proudly brought to you by Mighty Car Mods. Wow. That is us. Now, we are going to be putting this GTI engine in the up today, but first, we want to celebrate another Volkswagen. A very impactful car that, uh, that a lot of you may or may not have seen. And actually, the car from this video, that video is the most viewed video we've ever done. That's right. Uh, currently 11 million views. This is our Miss Daisy project. And when a car reaches the higher echelons of Mighty Car Mods, Wizardry, yes. regality, yes. royalty, yep, royalty. Uh, we like to celebrate it with a special edition poster. Look this here is Miss Daisy. We've got these posters available right now on the Mighty Come On store. Uh, once they're gone, they're gone forever. We never re-release them. It'll never be re-released. Uh, this here is available to ship to you anywhere in the world. There's a thing popping up now and a link down below. Uh, these are packed and shipped by us. Each one will be individually autographed for you. Uh, and once they're gone after a limited time, they will be gone forever. Original artworks by our friend Jastami, who's drawn this, and also our friend Garth from Supervillain, who has drawn the rest of it, which is just awesome. Looks great on the wall, people. Yeah, and Love excellent cars. to support artists and, of course, support the show. So you can check that out right now. Um, if you click on the link, and it says buy now, it means they're available. If you click and it says sold out, sold out or not, it obviously means they're gone. But if you go right now and you actually have the option to get one, it means you will be able to secure yourself one. So there it is, Miss Daisy, limited time only. Now, let's jump into the Volkswagen Up. In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we're putting this Up GTI engine inside this Volkswagen Up to make it the first and only Up GTI in Australia. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. The Up GTI conversion series is continuing. I got my mate Sam here again. How you doing, Sam? How you going? Good, thank you very much for coming down. Today, we're actually going to get the engine into the Up, and if we're lucky, even get it started. We did work out last time that we need to remove the entire interior, including the dash, so that is the first job for today. Got to do fuel pumps, got to do engine, got to do wiring, got to do interior, got to do seats. Uh, ECU, cluster, there's loads and loads of stuff to do. So let's just dive right into it and get started. What started out theoretically as a pretty simple GTI engine conversion is now turning into a full-blown teardown. I'm throwing the wheels back on so that we can move the car off the hoist to get some better access to remove the interior. For a car that is relatively simple, there is still lots of screws, connectors and covers that need to be removed to get further access into the inner workings of this little German nugget. Removing a head unit so that I can add a turbocharger, this was not part of the plan at all. Alright, the dash is out. This was a little... This was a... What do you call it in a computer game? A side quest. This was a side quest that we didn't think we needed to do uh, and then realised that we actually did need to do it. So um, this was not easy to get out, uh, actually, to be honest. It was very tricky. Um, just one little torque screw uh, will stop it coming out, which is why Volkswagen have put 437 of them in there. Um, but now, um, pop around here for a second and just have a look inside. All of this wiring that you can see down here, all of that stuff there is about to be replaced with the loom that we've got there. But also, uh, I need to take the carpet out because we need to change... Uh, the wiring will run down to the back of the car as well for fuel pump and stuff like that. So, as is usual with Mighty Car Mods, it's turning into a bigger job uh, than expected. But, luckily, we've got legends like Le Sam over here. That's the Sam in French, who's just doing a bellissimo job, that means excellent in Japanese, uh, in helping us out. So, uh, anyway, next up, uh, we'll peel the carpet back and then um, get ready to remove all of this factory wiring. There's actually quite a bit going on here, which we'll be getting to shortly, but in the meantime, I've got a whole new GTI interior, including seats and black trims and headlining, so all of this stuff can go in the bin. I also need to swap out the fuel pump for the upgraded unit from the GTI, but this should be a direct drop-in replacement, making it the quickest and easiest job that we have to do today. With this one removed, I can simply drop the GTI assembly into the tank. The fuel pump that comes in my up is not going to be big enough to feed the hungry, monstrous, yet miniature turbocharger that is on the up GTI engine. So I do need to replace the fuel pump. I was going to buy one and then I looked through and of course, because these records in the UK are absolute legends, they have included uh, not just the fuel pump, but we have like the whole hangar assembly here. So I'll do a little unboxing for you all for real. Um, it also has here, the fuel pump drive. That is the little level sender there. And I should be able to 
just look at this this is so good this is exactly what you want by the way when you like getting something from a wrecker you want it exactly like that so i've got my little level sender here so basically i'm going to unplug this now um, the old one i will drop that whole thing in and then that will have all of my fueling needs for my gti engine I know that there's going to be some challenges getting the car working related to the keys, the ECU and the barrel, but at least this fueling system is a treat to install because it's just going to go straight in, which will make this the easiest fuel pump upgrade of all time. So I was just commenting on how this was the easiest fuel pump upgrade of all time because the whole hanger goes in. Well, it turns out they're slightly different. For starters, that doesn't fit. Uh, and when this uh, ring that's not there anymore is here, uh, is on, that doesn't fit in the tank either. So I think what I'm going to do is actually just take the pump out, physically take it out of there, swap that into the other enclosure and then we'll go from there. I'm going to revisit and get back to the fuel pump soon because I don't actually need it working right now but what I do need to do is get rid of the rest of the interior so we can trace back where the original loom goes. So next up the headlining can come out and go in the bin. There's only one part of this GTI loom that was cut and that is this piece right here and I'll show you why. So we have less wires over here and the reason is, I'm just about to give these a little snip is that the other car probably had reverse sensors and ours doesn't, but also what's going down into there is the license place light and the tail lights. So we would have probably had to get into the bar and remove the lights. So for now, I'm just snipping those, then we'll get rid of all of this factory wiring and then replace it with the GTI loom. And then I'll go through and I'll basically just resolder any of these that we need to basically connect that to the GTI one. So now we're gonna remove all of this, put it in the bin, and then we'll get the other one and wrangle it back into place. And then we can get, uh, get onto installing the engine. After removing the airbag and the steering wheel, we've been able to unplug the final part of the loom. Aaron has also turned up. He loves coming to help us with our projects. Uh, and so now um, we're going to attempt to pull all of this out, throw it in the bin, then put the GTI loom in and then we can put the engine in. Uh, this car, I mean, it's been a full day now. So we've been doing the wiring for, uh, that would be seven hours. We've been doing it for seven hours. It just is fighting us all the way along. Please don't turbo me. I don't want to be fast and mad. Yes, you do. You do want to be fast and mad. All right, here's all the factory wiring, all 10, 15 kilos of it. That there can just get in the bin where it belongs. Some cars, this here is actually in components, different sections. Volkswagen, nope. Too bad. If you want to add a turbo to your car, you can go and rewire your ABS sensors and your license plate lights. All right, now we've got to do exactly the same thing, but with this stuff over here. So we now get this and do the reverse of what we just did. While this is a big job, in our case, this is the right way to do it because this is the loom that came from the same car as the GTI engine, which means it should just work. We have noticed a couple of unique anomalies such as the GTI loom also features the sound actor. This is Volkswagen's buzz box that sends artificial sound into the cabin. My naturally aspirated full purity up doesn't have this unnecessary feature, but the rest of it is looking pretty much exactly the same, which means I'm confident that we may be able to get this car started today. So it's taken us eight hours so far just to get to this point in terms of removing interior and running the loom. We have not even touched the engine yet. So for some reason in my mind, I thought I was just gonna throw the engine in there and plug, 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 that is not the case. 
unlike Subarus like the Levorg that we did recently, uh, that has a loom that you can disconnect in sections, Volkswagen, that is not the case. So my first job for today, come and have a look at this, is basically to get this piece here, which controls the uh, rear lights, indicators, license plate lights and things like that. That bit had to be chopped. This here is up loom. This here is up GTI. There's more stuff going on there, I think, maybe because of maybe reverse sensors or reverse cameras. So first job is just to solder all of those together and then come over here. Uh, we saw that the GTI pump, this structure does not actually fit inside the up fuel tank. So I think probably what I'm going to do is, this is the up one, is I'm just going to take off the top of this assembly and then take off the top of this one and try and get the up assembly to fit onto the whole hanger from the GTI. Uh, it looks like there's only about five or six wires that need to be uh, soldered up. Uh, and then I will remove the fuel hose here and just replace it with another piece of, you know, hose. Uh, and then hopefully that can go in. So while I'm doing that, Sam is down doing the ABS pump. Is that what you're doing, Sam? Yep. Great. Uh, and so a bit of wiring, a bit of pump, and then uh, soon we'll be able to get the GTI engine into the up, which is very exciting. So uh, I'm going to solder, he's going to ABS, and we'll see if the engine side is soon. I'm going to start by soldering anything that is a clear match in terms of wire colour. There are a few that I'm unsure about, so I've sent a photo to Dave, the wiring wizard, and he's instructed me to leave those until we can work out exactly what they do and if we need them. I'm using the Ryobi soldering iron which runs on an 18 volt battery which makes it super versatile and tactile while working in the car and the Ryobi heat gun which very handily uses the same battery and I'm using this on the heat shrink. There was only one casualty getting this loom through the firewall and that was this brown wire here. I don't actually know what it does or where it goes but it was cut um, so I just need to extend it a little bit so I put a little bit of heat shrink on there and I'm just going to connect these two ends together. Then put the heat shrink back on, wrap it back up, and then that should be all good. With the broken wire now repaired inside of the car, I can now grab the up fuel hanger and the up GTI hanger and make a hybrid of the two different systems. I'm swapping out the factory single use fuel tube for some fuel hose and hose clamps, which should work without any worries at all. Then all I need to do is swap the wiring and solder it up and it'll be good to go. So I've cobbled together this fuel system using parts from the up GTI and the up. So the top here, uh, the original problem that we had was this here did not fit into our fuel tank. This is from the GTI. So now what I've done is I've cut these wires uh, and re-soldered them here. Uh, these hoses that were connected before uh, were one use only, so I had to cut them off. So I've got this part here, which is from uh, GTI with GTI fuel pump in it, going on a new piece of hose that's going into the cap here that is up. Um, I had to do this twice actually because the hose that I put on had a bit of a kink in it. So when we installed in the car, I'm just gonna have to move this over and then once it's in the tank, I'll let that hang out so it's got a nice loop to it. So that's it. Hopefully uh, this was one of those unexpected things that we thought would just be drop in. It turns out there's, there's actually quite a few differences. We've just found out the key barrel also doesn't fit. So it's one of those things that starts easy and it's like, hey, just put the engine in and plug the loom in. Plug the loom in means remove the interior. Remove the interior means, well, you've seen what happens. So anyway, we're going to throw this in. Uh, Sam, you around. We'll just dump this in. How are you going today, mate? Are you enjoying the Volkswagen Up experience? Yeah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very happy being here with you, mate. Would have come around a bit more. Where's the ring? We've lost it, haven't we? Possibly. Great. All right, that job's done. Okay. Now we're going to move on to... What are we doing next, Sam? Prepping the engine. Nice. The fuel pump is now successfully in the tank, which means we can tighten it up and connect the lines. These engines usually come with a six-speed GTI box, but ours came with a five-speed from the Up Turbo TSI because this is all that was available at the time, but it does made up without any issues. While the engine's out, we're going to remove the gearbox so we can check out the condition of the clutch. The flywheel needs a bit of a clean up after sitting for so long, but so far it looks like this should be fine for now just to get us moving. Down the line, we'll replace the clutch if we change the turbo or we boost it. So now we can turn our attention to the engine mounts and getting them in place ready to install the engine. This here is the engine mount from the non-turbo up, and as you can see, the engine mount bolt has lots of meat at the bottom to go down here. But the GTI engine has a much meatier mount. You can see just how much bigger it is and how much more meat there is over here. Now, what that means is that these bolts that we have don't actually give you enough meat coming out the other end to actually hold it on properly. So we need to get some high tensile bolts that are longer than that. In the meantime, just so we can get it kind of all mounted up, I've got a couple of bolts here that are the correct 
thread pitch. So basically we'll put that in, put this one here in. We do have to use this mount. And so later on, I will replace these in the process of basically getting these and going, I just need one that is longer. But in the meantime, so we're not held up, just putting in these two bolts, that will hold that into place. Uh, and then um, we can start maneuvering the engine into place. So we're not able to get a new clutch in time for today's install because we can't get a new clutch today and we do want to put this in today. Sam, what's the deal and condition with this one? Well, basically it looks like it's been sat there for a very long time. You can see a couple marks on the flywheel and on the pressure plate as well. But a light yeah, okay. little clean up, we should be okay because we can't get one. Yeah, I mean, this is the only clutch we have, and therefore it is the... The best clutch we have. The best clutch we have. All right, so we'll put this back together uh, and then get the engine in. Done. Awesome, let's do it. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what makes us like a certain car, a certain kind of food or a certain person or personality, but what I can say without a shadow of a doubt is that I really like this car. I mean, I like it a lot. To put it into perspective, it is up there with my 180SX, and if you made me choose one of them, I'd have to think about it very carefully, and even then, I actually don't think I'd be able to choose. I know it's not that cool, I know it's not a hero of any kind, but I reckon it's one of the best cars out there for the money. I've driven it to the outback, on racetracks and in motor carners, and it keeps impressing me every time I drive it, and I can't wait to see what it's like once it's turbo. This is so exciting. The GTI engine is going in. I've also managed to find two of the engine mount bolts that we need uh, from a shop in Parramatta. They're getting couriered here. They're gonna be here in about 15 minutes. This here is just Jimmy up fine though to work for now. We've just used some Mighty Car Mods cable ties, which you can get right now from the Mighty Car Mod store to hold the linkages out of the way. Every car needs those. This build wouldn't have been possible without them. Isn't that right, Sam? 100. <laughs> we have used one. We've used one cable tight. We're going in then? Yeah, we're going in. Okay, here we go. All right, watch your feet. Ah, oh, so exciting. In less than 30 seconds, the GTI engine is in. This is literally the easiest engine swap of all time. That's a GTI engine in and up. Sam, you're an absolute boss. Did you know that? No. Yes, you did. No, I did. Stop it. You're a boss. <laughs> Now we just have to make it work. And we've also realised that the loom that looked exactly the same, no! No, it's not the same! None of it's the same. It's like, it's one of those things that originally we were just like, take the engine out, put this one in and just plug it in. That's what we thought, yeah. No. But no that's not off. the case nope. at all. Uh, so there's a bunch of other things going on inside the car that need our attention. But for the meantime, let's make this do. I'm happy. Let's make it yeah, work. Let's do it. Awesome, I'll get rid of the, get rid of the forky. With the engine now in, we can start connecting everything up, including upgrading our dog bone mount to one from the GTI. Our longer high tensile bolts have also arrived, which means now we can install our engine mounts. Now it's just a matter of getting our GTI loom and connecting it up to the GTI engine. Next up, this whole component gets bolted to the front of the car. This has got the radiator in it and some of the air conditioning components and goes on as a single unit directly from the GTI to my up. Technically, we should be getting close to starting this car for the very first time, but we've just hit a massive roadblock that's gonna stop this build in its tracks. We've hit a bit of a snag in that we don't have any shifter cables to go from the actual shifter that will mate up with the five-speed box that's on the GTI engine. So normally the GTI engine comes with a six-speed. Ours, for reasons that I'm not exactly sure, came with a five-speed from the turbo up, and that is just not compatible with our shifter, mostly because ours is one, two, three, four, five. Reverse is here on theirs, reverse is the other way. Um, due to lockouts, it, it's just not going to work. So what I need to do is try and find some cables that fit. That's not gonna be an Australia thing because we only got non-turbo ups here. So this is gonna be kind of trying to trawl through the internet, contact uh, some wreckers in the UK, or it's get a six speed box with associated cables and other bits, maybe drive shafts as well, I'm not sure yet. We actually just need a little bit of time to research, find out what we need and order it, then it is gonna have to come from overseas, which is gonna take a couple of weeks. So. That's where we're gonna to have to leave it from now. Uh, a massive thank you to Sam uh, and to Aaron who have been jumping in helping with this project. Uh, and hopefully next time you see us and the up, we've got all the bits that we need to actually finish it off, finish off the interior. Uh, we've got the full interior conversion to do as well. A, B and C palas, black, black headlining. It is gonna be excellent, but right now it's, uh, it's as far as we can go. So there it is. 
that is the up project so far. Of course, if you do want to support the show, please check out MightyCarMods.com. Grab yourself some merch like this shirt. Uh, this is our engine heart shirt, which is awesome. It's an engine and it's a heart and it's a map. It's actually really cool. Uh, and it directly goes to supporting the show and supporting these projects. Thank you very much. See you next time. And uh, thank you, boys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry we didn't quite get there today, but next time.